What's up guys, my name is Khan, and we're back today with more Logic Car, and for those of you guys who don't know, this is a game about programming this car to get from start to finish, but it's not always one car, sometimes there's obstacles, sometimes there's jumps, and it's kind of like that poly bridge ISO type view, and it's really super super fun. So, we already beat the first nine levels in the last video, and a few of you were saying that that's actually like the end of the game, there's only one level left, so I really hope that there's more than just this next level. All right, so level 10, what we've got to do is get the car across this jump to here. I'm assuming we're going to have to fly, and it looks like we've got crates in behind, and then these barrels, and if we press play, okay, the barrels float. Now, in this game, you have detection. You have visual detection, like object detection, and it gives you distances to objects, but it doesn't count the terrain as part of those objects. There's an angle one as well. Um, I don't know what we actually get for this, so hold on, what do we get? We get a... Uh, Air Burster, okay, that's to, like, fly. We get Nitro, that's good. We got an engine. And then we have a Distance Sensor, Obstacle Sensor, that's it. Okay, so I think what we're gonna have to do is activate the Nitro. Once we're, I mean, we're gonna, okay, so when we start, we activate the engine right away. That's easy, it always goes forward. We're gonna activate the Nitro once the backwards distance gets above a certain amount, because that means we're a certain distance from this. And then we activate the Air Burster when the downwards distance is above a certain amount, because when the distance sensor doesn't detect anything, it outputs a negative one. So this should actually be pretty easy. So we just need a couple comparisons. And on the one, we're going to have the backwards comparison. And on the other, we have the downwards comparison. So if the backwards comparison is greater than, I don't know, 50, I don't know what units we're going to actually need. But let's say it's greater than 50, then that'll trigger the nitro. Uh, and then after that, we'll do the downward sensor, also greater than, I don't know, 50. Then that'll trigger the, uh, air burster. Now, a few of you guys were actually saying, this is a really easy programming language to follow, I guess, if you want to call it a, a language, whatever, nodes. But it's actually pretty simple. The red arrows always execute, and the blue and green are basically conditions on the red. So whenever you get to a certain point in the red sequence, it evaluates the condition, and then it repeats the red sequence. So, in this case, for example... Uh, we're going to have this branch node, right? And the branch node is going to trigger... So the engine, it starts the sequence, we trigger the engine, the engine proceeds to the branch node, and then we check this comparison. And we're going to say, is the backward sensor greater than 50? And if it's false, we're going to loop back and check again. Because if we basically want to keep checking until it's greater than 50. And if it's true, we're going to hit the nitro. And that means, so once we're above 50 on the backward sensor, we'll hit the nitro. Then we go to another branch node, because we've already triggered the nitro. And we do the next check, and we say, okay, is the downward sensor greater than 50, which means we see the barrels. And if that's true, we trigger the air burster downwards? I can't remember. I think it's downwards. It's, it's counterintuitive. Downwards actually shoots the air down, which brings the car up. And again, if this is false, we check. So these are basically your while loops, and uh, the whole thing should should work, right? That's This is going to be good. I don't know how far 50 is. That's 50, apparently. Okay, well, the, um, okay, hold on, we need to, we need to, we need to log this. Um, no, we need to log this, actually, just log the sensor. And let's, uh, let's try this again, let's take a look at what that actually outputs. Alright, so the sensor, 50 is a good spot for that. It sees, was it 127? Visualize, let's try that, was it one, I can't remember, 127 I think is what I saw? Oh, it's only like 26. Okay, it's only 26 on the down sensor. Let's just go greater than 10 on the downward sensor. I don't know what the upward sensor is seeing. That's some weird stuff. All right, I think that's it. This should be it. Just going to see the down... Uh... Uh... Chief? Oh. Yeah, no, no, no. A is... Yeah, no, that's... It's not... Uh-huh. Okay. That... Good. Good, good, good language. Good, good job. There we go. There we go. There we go. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's see that again. That was awesome. That was awesome. Play. Let's go, car. Full send. Perfect. Look at that boost. Downward sensor. Oh, that was different. It actually is different each time. It's not the same. I thought it was always the same. I guess it actually recalculates the physics each time. Okay, that one. No, that one looked the same. Okay, it was just the first one that was different. Awesome. Perfect. Next stage. Oh, look at that! There is more than 10 stages. That's fantastic. What is this now? Do we... What do we have for... Hold on. Okay, so there's a few different things. Let's see. First of all, do we have multiple canvases? 
No, there's only one programming. Okay, so we're only allowed one set of programming for both cars. Uh, what do we have? A distance sensor and a... Uh, yeah, no, that's a distance sensor. And a burster and an engine. How is this not just burst up once you see, like, a certain distance from the stuff in behind you? I feel like that's all it is, right? We just go engine full forward. Air burster's gonna be downwards, right? Obstacle sensor, and we just do the same setup again with a boolean loop, right? So we go boom, false triggers back, evaluate the condition. The condition is gonna be the backwards sensor is greater than, I don't know, 20, right? And then true, we burst the downwards burster. I think, because they're just both going to drive and then burst up, right? Like, how is that not... That's the solution. Oh, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. I see why this might be a little bit more difficult. Maybe the bursters aren't, they aren't perfectly lined up. Okay. No, no, they actually do. Look at that. Look at how easy that was. Awesome. This game's pretty cool. I really like this game. All right, next stage, let's go. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. We only have one canvas. Angle sensor. A burster. An engine. What is this? We got obstacle, angle, an engine, and a burster. Oh, boy. How the heck do we do this? And we only have one canvas? Oh, this is... Okay, hold on. I know what they want us to do. I know what they want us to do. Okay. What do we have for obstacles? I've, like, nothing. The only obstacle it can read is this, is this thing here. What if... They all just, like, burst at the same time? Then wouldn't two of them make it over and two of them would make it down? If I could just, like, time a burst and then they all burst, two of them will land up top and two of them will land down below. Because they're all going to start driving at the same time. So. We don't have an obstacle sensor. At all. Alright, I have a theory here. And I think what we can do. Is this, like, if I if I watch this car. I'm going to watch the second car here. I think, it, I think it sees the car in front. So. What if we make it so that the engine only goes. If it doesn't see a car in front. And then that way they go one at a time. And then we can have them all jump at a specific time. So let's do this. Let's see. Let's make this a branch loop, right? It's typical while loop. And then let's say front sensor, forward sensor um, is less than zero. Which means it doesn't see anything in front of it. Then you're allowed to go, right? Because when it doesn't see anything, it outputs a negative one on the sensor. So let's see what that does. So this should only trigger one car at a time. And it does. And then once it goes, that one goes. And then once it goes, that one goes. Okay, and then once it goes, that one goes. Okay, so we're like halfway there. Right? And then all we gotta do is ignore the angle sensor. I think we could use the distance sensor again with the burster. And just do another comparison loop and say if the burster, right, is... If the backwards direction is greater than like 20 then burst and i think this will work because the third car we want to drop down but if we get the distance perfectly right it'll burst and still drop down and then the final car won't ever see anything behind it so it'll never burst at all which is fine it'll just drop down so this triggers true that'll be the burster and that burst downwards and false goes this way right so then we just got to figure out if this distance is correct i think this will work though so first car goes see it triggers that one, see, it's not enough. It needs to be more. See, so we need it. So the first two burst over, and then the last one. This is actually going to be perfect. So let's try 30. Here we go. This is actually going to work great. So first car goes, bursts. Second car goes, bursts. Third car goes, bursts. But it's too early. No! Oh, man. That was so close. Okay, we'll get it. 27. Let's try 27. It's, it's close. It's close. First car, burst. Second car, burst. Third car, fail. Perfect. Fourth car doesn't burst at all. Let's go. That was awesome. I love it. That's so great. I, I This is so cool. I mean, I guess you could use the angle sensor too to do something. So I like this though. Check the cars in behind. I need to remember this now. Wild loop to start the engine. That is, that is going to be key. I feel like there's going to be a lot of levels with multiple vehicles. 
and uh, a single canvas, which is fun. There are also multiple canvases. Sometimes you get to program different things on different cars. But look at that. That was that was really good. I like that. So, um, I have a treasure chest. What do I have to wait a minute? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do I have to deliver stuff? Is that what like do I have to deliver? I guess I, there's two flags. Only one. Car, so I have to deliver the chest to the flag. So we have to burst over this flag and then turn around and then go forward. Okay. Okay. We can do this. Is that what is this? Oh my god. Launcher? What is this nonsense? Picker? What? Obstacle? Oh my god, bro. What? Oh my god. Okay, this is so complicated now. Oh my god. And then we gotta have the engine like switch modes and stuff. This just went from like super easy to super hard. And an angle set. I don't know if we need the angle sensor. Okay. The first thing, there's a lot. What does the launcher even do? What what happens if I do this? Let me just trigger the launcher. Let's see what this does. Okay, yeets it up. Okay. Okay, well, hold on. Hold on a minute here. So what if we, what if we trigger the engine mode? Yeah, no, okay, let's disconnect this. What if we trigger the engine mode? Right, and then let's put the launcher on a, on a branch while loop. Trigger that to false, trigger this to true. Right, and let's launch it when the forward sensor, uh, I don't know, is great, is, is less than, uh, 50. Because it can see this box right here. So let's see if we can, what, what does this do? Is this gonna... Okay, it was less than 50 off the bat. Alright, well, hold on. Let's see what happens. What happens when it lands? Does it just push this treasure chest? Okay, it does. So really, the only thing we need to actually do is get the one treasure chest to launch off at the right time. We actually don't... We don't care about the other one at all. So let's just do it this way, then. Uh, downward sensor greater than 50. Launch the top chest. I don't even care about the picker. Because we can just push this other chest in. This is actually a lot easier than I thought. Okay. So now all we need to do is have this one. Yeah. No, no, that that's good. We need it. We need to have it yeet when it sees. Does it not see that bottom? Let's check that again. I want it to see when it sees this box, eject this guy. Right? That's all we need it to do. What are you? Nothing. Okay, you saw you saw down. Oh, greater than 50. Greater than like five. Okay, there we go. Let's try this. Perfect. So, uh, uh, yeah, that, that, that'll work. All right. All right, here we go. Yeet it. There we go. You shot it too hard. Are you kidding me, bro? Bro. Ugh. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm literally an idiot. I'm sitting here thinking, how am I going to do this? And I, I'm an idiot. Th there's a launcher power. You can literally, I'm, I'm such an idiot. I spent way too long on this. We just need to go back to the downward thing. Downward, five. Downward, no, downward greater than five. Yeah, you see something on downward. Let me just adjust the power. Oh my god, I'm an idiot because we were overshooting it. You can just, you can just... Look at that. Oh my god. Oh my... Wait. What? What? I don't... I don't understand. I don't... What am I supposed to do? Am I supposed to deliver the chest, like, on the car? Am I supposed to, like, pick it up? Okay, well, what if I do this? No, not launcher. What if I do picker? Yeah, you launch that one, and then we'll just do a, a branch loop here, right? And, and if it's true, we'll pick up true, right? And that'll just be if the forward sensor... Um is like greater than zero yeah so then if that happens pick up do we have to pick up the other one maybe that's the issue so we launch the first one and then we pick up the other one that we're pushing it is that the problem you have to like go across the line with one carried all right get that one grab this one okay easy easy game easy game oh my god that was actually really tough holy cow that was i, I can't believe i forgot there was a power there i'm sitting here trying to play with angles and stuff you just have to adjust the power Oh, this game's going to get tough really fast. I can already tell. Oh my God. Seriously? So we have to grab the chest and get the chest to the finish without the boxes. 
what do we actually have? We have start. We got a air burster. We got an engine. Right. Okay. And then we've got the picker and launcher nonsense. Okay. I guess the million dollar question is, can we pick... Like, let's just check if we can pick up this crate, or can we only pick up the chest? Because if we can pick up the crate, then that's a little bit more confusing. Um, so let's just set up a basic loop here. Let's do the same thing we did. Uh, distance sensor forward is greater than, like, I don't know, greater than zero, basically. Then we can trigger the branch node um, to pick up whatever's, whatever's directly in front of the car. So let's see if this actually just picks up that box. Oh, it does. That sucks. That sucks a lot. I was really hoping it wouldn't pick up the box. Okay, so it can pick up basically anything. So we need to have it, like, pick up and launch three times. I mean, we could do this. There's a really bad way to do this, and there's a really good way to do this. The bad way to do this is literally write out the sequence and have it check three times. So we can go pick, throw, pick, throw. Um, and then pick up and then just push. So, like, that's the bad way to do it. And, like, that would be really easy because it lets us repeat the nodes. So, that's what we're going to do. So, we're going to go pick her, and then you throw it right away, right? And then we do the same operations. We go back to a branch node, and then we go back to the picker. And we go, again, true. This executes back, and then this becomes false. So, this is, like, a really terrible way to program. This is like programming with a bunch of go-to statements and, like, really bad labels, and your code just jumps... Like, we should have this loop back over to this loop and check again. And then have some condition that checks, like, if there's only one obstacle in front of you, then obviously you've picked up the last box. But this is easy, because then pick her here again. We know it's box, box, right? Box, box. So this one also just launches right away. Just 100%, just send her. And then we loop this whole thing back one more time. So we're going to take that whole thing and loop it back to another branch node. This branch node compares to this same condition. This one also to the same condition. This loops back to the branch node. And if that one's true, uh, we're going to pick it up and keep it. And if it's false, we're going to loop back around to itself. This, this is fine. This is terrible coding. Absolutely terrible. But this should work only if it's set up exactly this. So pick up... Why'd you not launch, bro? Why- Why'd you not... Pick up launch? Why are you not... Why did you not launch? Hold on, what is the distance sensor output when I have cargo on board? Does it tell me there's cargo on board? It does. Alright, so I'm gonna delete all those other nodes for now. Um, cause obviously those are useless. We need to figure out how to get this thing to launch right away. For some reason it's not... It doesn't want to launch. It, like, it sends the execution all the way through. Even though I would have thought it would wait. It's not waiting. If pickup's true... Oh, we just need to do this. Just need to have another, another branch node. Right? We do a branch node here. And then, can we... Can we uh, that's an input. Okay, so we need a branch node before the launcher. Otherwise, we continue to execute that loop. Um, and the branch node before the launcher needs to check something. Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm so dumb. I'm literally so dumb. This is wrong. This is A is greater than B. It should be A is less than B, and B should be like 1. It's been sending the signal true the whole time, and the picker- Oh my god, this is- I bet you this will work now if I do this. Is this gonna work, and then I'm gonna have to recreate the whole thing? It's because this was greater than B. It should be less than B. Don't do anything. Pick up. You still don't launch. Okay, hold on, hold on. Houston, we have a problem here. What if we just have another condition where the launcher launches um, if the forward obstacle sensor is greater than 5? Or less than 5? So it'll pick up when it's less than 1, and it'll launch when it's less than 5. So right before it sees the next thing, it should launch. Right, so let's see what this does. So this should pick this one up. Or, okay, or just yeet it right away. Um, I don't know why it yeeted it right away. Is that, okay, it didn't that time. And now, now it didn't, why, what? Why is it sometimes yeeting it and sometimes not? Okay, it just, it just yeeted it that time. 
What is going on? Why is it only eating it half the time? Alright, so I think I've discovered uh, a couple things. I, I tried originally, so I thought maybe, okay, the problem is we need multiple obstacle sensors. But I think the game actually only records one obstacle sensor, even if I put it like 600 times. So, for example, if I have another obstacle here, like, look, I, I can put another whole condition set, right? And then let's remove this launcher and let's put another branch node here. And if I connect this up and I give these two different conditions, let's say this one's less than B, this one's greater than B, it seems like it evaluates them both right away. So let's log them both. And if we click on the car, you'll notice as we watch, there's only one obstacle sensor. And as soon as it uses it, it like saves the values. And so that's why we keep pushing the crates. But then I also came across this interesting thing which I didn't think of, uh, you can loop the launcher back to itself, which is kind of hilarious. So then we end up with this, um, where we just reject everything, everything right away. So now I just need to figure out how to get it to not eject that one, but eject every other one. And I think I don't know how to do it. All right, I got the solution. I, it took me way too freaking long. Uh, so, so th I think the thing I said about the sensors was right, but only for, like, the one sensor. Like, the forward sensor, once we've used the forward sensor, we can't reuse. I don't honestly know. It seems very weird how the sensors work. But anyway, this this works. I figured it out. So, we trigger the start. We start the engine. We turn the pick picker on because it can just be on. And then we have a while loop checking for when we're close to the first crate and we do an air burster to jump the first crate like we used to do. We're going to use that first crate to figure out how far we need to go to get to the next crate, right? So here's the first crate, here's the second crate, and then we need to pick up this one. And then all we're doing is checking when the backward sensor is less than 20, you're gonna not do anything, you're gonna keep looping back. But if it's greater than 20, you're gonna launch the, the crate here. So I think, I think this works, so check it out. So we're gonna jump this crate, right? And it's gonna look for the one in behind, it sees it, picks it up, boom. I don't actually you know what is that redundant? I feel like this is a redundant loop If I can I honestly just feed let me hold on let me check something real quick Can I feed this right into this? I'd feel really stupid if I could I don't honestly know if it's actually checking this I feel like it's just ejecting as soon as that next crate gets there. I might be wrong. Oh No, it's not okay. It is actually checking the distance. I was right the first time it does need to check the distance So we're checking the distance I honestly, sometimes I, I don't even understand how it works, but it, it, you know, it just does. Sometimes you just get lucky and it works and you're like, hey, let's go with it. But it jumps over when it sees the crate in behind, checks the distance, ejects the one. And then we're too far away after that, so it doesn't eject the next one. And boom, done. Perfect. Amazing. Next stage. All right. I think this is the final stage we're going to do. Um, I don't understand how this is difficult. Canvas one. Do we have multiple canvases? No, we only have one canvas. I what like what's so hard? All right, there's got to be a trick to it that isn't just drive. So what happens when we start? Okay, the trophy falls. Right. And then and then and then what? Do we we have to pick up the trophy? Okay. Is that is that is that what it is? And then we have to just is that all we get to do is pick up the trophy? So we can go start and we can go picker, right? Like they can all have the picker. But I guess the key here is we have to delay the engine is the issue. Is that all it is? Like if I just press play now, I got the picker on. It just grabs it. Okay, okay. So that's the key is how do we delay the engine on all three of these? Hold on, I'm an idiot. We could just do this the way we did the, the last one. If front sensor, we could trigger the picker to always be on right and then the front sensor uh has to see something it has to be less than like zero less than zero and if it's less than zero you're allowed to drive because then this car is gonna go and then this one's gonna go and then this one's gonna go and by the time this one goes it should have picked up the trophy is what i'm thinking uh less than zero where's the while loop here we go so branch loop and we do a branch node we loop that back let me check. And when it's less than zero, that's because there's nothing in front of it. So the car only sees like a negative one if there's no pickup on the sensor. And it should see the car in front until that car disappears on the flag. Um, so then this triggers the engine, right? Does that, does that work? 
That'll work. I think. Alright, let's try it. Perfect. You pick that up. Perfect. Perfect. Look at that. Easy mode. Easy mode. I was overthinking it. Alright, well, the next stage looks amazing. Uh, because obviously we're gonna have to do some timing and launch the box to hit the trophy off. So, definitely gonna do this in the next video. But, let me know what you guys think of this game in the comments down below. I really like it. I like how the puzzles involve picking up blocks and stuff like that. I can't wait to see what they go. I also noticed there is this show rope range thing. So I feel like at some point we're going to have a ninja car, which I'm super excited about. But let me know what you guys think of this game in the comments down below. Make sure, of course, you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and we'll see y'all next time.